In this video, I'm doing a review of the Primo Planner, or it might be pronounced Primo Planner. I'm not entirely sure. Um, you can see how it's spelled here, though, if you want to search it on Amazon, and I will have the link down below. So it is a six-month undated planner, and it was only $7, which is the cheapest I think I have ever seen a planner. Um, even if you times it by two to get enough for 12 months for a whole year, it's only going to be $14, which is ridiculously cheap. Like, I see Dockroid notebooks for more expensive than that these days. So let's see what you get for that bargain price. So it's a plain black cover, and unfortunately there were no other cover colours to choose from. Um, so pretty typical, you'd have the black cover on most sewn bound um, notebooks. I'm just going to move this label so we can have a better look. It does have a built-in pen loop, which is something quite different that I don't see very often being literally built into the cover like that. It is quite chunky because it has um, a two-page monthly spread, a one-page weekly overview, and then a one-page per day. So because of all of that, it is quite chunky at about one inch thick. Nothing printed on the spine. It is quite heavy. I'm not sure you want to take this with you um, everywhere. You might need to take a photo of that day's page and then just have it on your phone if you don't want to lug the planner around with you. I forgot to do the dimensions. So it is 5.75 inches wide by 8.25 inches high, which is fairly standard, um, around about A5 page size, so quite common for these stone bound planners. Bright white pages is already a major pro. It's not your gross, yucky um, yellow pages. I cannot stand that. And they seem to be very common in sewn bound planners. So if it has white paper, that's already immediately pro for me. These are the only dated pages in the whole planner. Maybe that's why it's so cheap. I mean, it's just two pages. You can just glue something in over the top or use washi tape um, and cover it up. And then the whole rest of the planner is undated. Like there's no dates. So if you want a tutorial on how to resize printables to suit um, any page size, I'll have a link to my tutorial down below. It includes a video as well. So at the front here, we have just an overview of how they suggest you use each page and just giving you some more um, tips about the layout. I will have photos of everything, which will be in the blog post link down below if you want to you know, read it all in detail. I'm just going to quickly show you in this video. So at the front here, we have two pages, which they call the initial plan, which is kind of like a what do you want to, where do you want to go, I guess. Something different is that they have an accountability section, um, so you can talk to someone else about your plan. So all of this is great, but then it jumps straight to the first monthly spread. And I'm like, but where am I going to actually like plan out the plan? You know what I mean? Like all you've got is this, which is not much space at all. There is 13 um, double-sided dot grid pages at the back of the planner, which you could use to plan it all out. But there's no structured um, goal page. There's not even like a six monthly plan where you can have an overview of, okay, in you know January, I'm going to do this. In March, these are like my top five. It's literally just this and then that's it. The planner starts. So I was quite disappointed with that, particularly since on the label, it calls it a um, productivity planner. I was like, well, I'm not really sure how the productivity comes into it it's more just like a basic planner um, then something I thought was different you have to turn the page for the monthly spread so I don't mind turning the page and you know, I don't think that's an issue for me but some people might not like it because then it goes straight to a portrait page again so you might be you know doing a lot of this turning and then turning again which could irritate some people so just keep that in mind it has a Sunday week start which is consistent with the one page weekly overview you'll see in a sec you can see that there is no dates. You can add them yourself. They do give you these circles here for you to write the date in and you could get some colored um, pencils or highlighters and color these in and add a, a bit more decoration to it because it is just this plain um, black and white style throughout the whole um, planner. There is this double border here, which I think is a good idea except when it's really close to other boxes. So you can see here it's, it gets a bit busy. So if I'm going to use this planner, I would color in these like just get a marker pen uh, maybe like the muji hexa and just color in those lines and then it might not be so busy so there's space to put the month up the top and the year or whatever else you want to put up there they have this little daily habit section which is a good idea but then there's no habit trackers for me to actually track my progress on those habits so i thought that was a little disappointing and something they could definitely add got a monthly goals box but it's unfortunately a bit small i'll probably just combine these two together if I, if I designed it and just have like one monthly goals box and just put the month here. But just being nitpicky, you've got self-encouragement and new ideas, which I thought was different. I never really see that in a planner layout. And then a review of your month. 
after the monthly spread we have that one page weekly overview and then the day to a page layout start so the start date on the weekly spread is sunday which is consistent with that monthly spread and you can see if i go in a bit closer don't mind my shadow and um, we have a bit of ghosting of those dots where you can write the date which are on that monthly spread so the paper quality is not the greatest but I wasn't expecting it to be for that price point. I can live with a little bit of show through. If the planner is going to be that cheap, I don't mind so much. We have some open-ended boxes again where they suggest that you put in um, the week and maybe like a weekly goal, but you can put whatever you want in there. Got priorities and then tasks sidebar. And then that's it for the weekly um, overview. And next we start the daily spreads. And they also start on a Sunday. So I'm loving the consistency in all the start days across everything. So for each day, we have a daily focus box, the schedule, which runs from 12 until 11. So you're only missing like one hour. So if you're someone who does a night shift or if you've just you've got a typical nine to five, like anyone can use this, this schedule is really long. And if you don't need all of those um, hourly sections, you can always just get some white out and maybe you just stop it at six o'clock and you've got some extra note space or you could do some meal planning or whatever else you want in there. You've got priorities tasks and then these little Zs are for you to record your sleep. But I'm not sure why they have it repeated on both the daily and the weekly. I think you don't need it on both, just, just one would be fine. And then if you get rid of that, you've got more space to use the schedule. These double lines, again, are a little busy, so I would definitely colour them in to try and um, break up all the, the black. So you've got the same layout for each day of the week, and then it starts the next overview. This repeats five times per month, so you don't have to worry about having half of your week for May, for example, um, back on May, and then half on June. You can keep it all with May. So that's probably another reason why the planner is so chunky, because you get those five weeks um, for each month. At the end of each month, we have this quick little monthly overview, which has some different questions than I normally see, like what has gone well, what did you learn, what has not gone well, and then plan a date for your next reflection. Um, I personally don't think you need that, but if you're someone who wants a prompter, it's there. I think this could be a bit more uh, detailed, or maybe give us four pages so you can add your own questions. You do have those dot grid pages at the back of the planner though as well if you need them. And then after that, each of the months start again. So the pages aren't laying completely flat on their own, but if we break the spine, let's see if they will after we do this. Not bad, it's laying pretty flat. Not as bad as some of um, Sewnbound planners that I've seen. So this continues the whole way for six months. And then I've already marked it with one of the two ribbon book marks. We can go to the back, which has the six monthly um, overview, which again is a little brief for me. I prefer a bit more detail, but there are some prompter questions there for you and line writing space. And then all of those dot grid pages start. So this dot grid is quite large. It's 0 0.25 inches for each box. So on all sides, um, which works out to about 6.35 millimeters. And if you use any dot grid notebooks for bullet journaling or just jotting notes or whatever you use them for, they're typically five mil. So this is a bit larger. So it could take some getting used to. I personally prefer the five mil. Um, so just make note you're probably either gonna love this size grid or hate it so if we continue through all the dock grid pages at the back here we have some journal prompts which was something different you can read some of those and i will have the photo things like what would you give a ted talk on and then you go oh, okay well i'm really passionate about this okay well maybe your goal should be directed towards that so i thought these questions were quite good and i haven't seen another planner include them so i quite like this page and something quite useful is a conversions page. So not sure I need the multiplication table anymore. Um, progressed a bit beyond primary school, but it's there if you think you need it. And we've got some conversions. So if you're in Australia or pretty much anywhere where we use kilometers, meters and centimeters, and you have trouble converting to the US inches and all of those, this page will be handy. It's also got 
like ounces as well. If you do baking, you can do a conversion here. Got a little ruler showing you. So some of this is helpful, some of this stuff. I don't really care about the distance, sorry, the diameter of the sun. Like when am I gonna need to know that or use that? So some of it I think is a bit of a waste, but generally it's quite helpful um, metric conversions. And then we have the pocket fold at the back, which is quite roomy. Doesn't come with any stickers or anything extra like that. It's just an empty pocket. And then the back cover is just plain black. Does have an elastic band to keep it closed. I've just taken it off to film this review. And instead of it being like a smooth cover, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of got like a textured finish on it, which I don't mind. Something different. So overall thoughts on this planner. For me personally, it's a no. I don't use a day to a page layout. I don't need that much space for each day. I prefer to just do um, like a one page weekly and then a big to-do list on the other side of my spread. And then that for me is plenty of space to do my whole week. Um, I do like that you have the weekly overview in addition to those daily pages because most day to a page planners will just launch straight from the monthly spread into these daily and they don't have that weekly overview where maybe you want to keep all your you know meal planning organized because I don't know how some people with the daily planner they're constantly flicking like okay what's the next meal like I think I prefer to see that stuff on just an overview page and probably also like fitness as well I probably put that on the weekly and then put all your to do's on the daily. Anyway, up to you how you want to lay it out. The other thing, I liked the, the two-page monthly calendar, how it was on the side. I thought that was all right. But if they're going to do that, I think they should have continued it the whole way through. So I don't mind this, but then I would want the weekly spread to be landscape and then each of the daily pages to be landscape as well. And I think that would have made this kind of really unique because I haven't seen another one do that. Um, and this is the only one that I've ever seen turn it on its side. So that could have been a good point of difference for them. And then maybe not the really bold um, borders like that, which are a bit busy to look at unless you... I think if you coloured them in, it won't look as bad. But like this, how it's really close, is quite busy to look at. So overall, if you're looking for a planner that has the monthly, weekly and daily, I think this for $7 is an absolute bargain. And if you're not sure, you've never tried a daily, a day to a page planner, give this one a go. It's it's seven dollars. Like you, I don't think I've ever seen a planner cheaper than that. Like you can't go wrong. Even if you don't use it for the full six months, if you use it for a month, it's like a dollar. That's ridiculously cheap. So love the price. Other bits of the planner, I would probably want to tweak or improve slightly. Uh, but I am quite picky after reviewing so many planners. So if you want to see some of the other planners that I've reviewed and doc grid notebooks and planner tutorials and graphic design tutorials then don't forget to subscribe um, the button is down below i usually post a new video each week